You know who always clears the over? Who? Let me guess. I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. It couldn't be your Kansas City Chiefs. It couldn't be. Not since Andy Reid's been there. All right, here we go. Kansas City Chiefs, Ra Raiders, Chargers, and Broncos all on. This is the best division in football. Uh, believe Whether you want to believe it or not, this is going to be must-see TV all season long, and we're going to break it down here right now. So with this, Scotty, and uh, I mean, I'm like you last stream. I'm like, you took like 15 code yellows last stream. I'm feeling like I'm taking like 15 this stream. I'm about to take another one here. Um, you just want me to start this off. Uh, I mean, I, I'll start with the Chiefs. That's you could, fine. You, I know. Well, I know you're going to go over Chiefs. I. Uh, That's why I'll start with them. Yeah, start while with the Chiefs. Taking spam a code yellow. yellow. Spam code yellow. Potty break. Spam code yellow in the chat, everybody. Chris has to go potty again. Um, you guys can see the numbers here as I click over my light for the 37th time. These numbers are weird to me um i actually need to look this up for sure tell me tell me a time that the chiefs since any of reed's been coached there that they have not reached 10 and a half wins and i'll i'll tell you maybe there was one year they went 10 and 6 but that was also when there was only 16 versus 17 games um the Chiefs at 10 and a half is a weird number. Uh, I think it's a bizarre number. I think the Chiefs easily eclipse. The Chiefs have an insanely difficult schedule. Insanely difficult schedule. The hardest schedule, you look up and down their schedule. If you ha if you don't believe me, look at it now. Um, it's hard. It's very difficult. But the only thing more difficult than the Chiefs schedule is the team that has to play the Chiefs every week. Because the Chiefs are a top, in my mind, certainly a top like three team in the league. So they're going to be favored, even with that hard schedule, 13 games at least. The over here seems so obvious to me. The Chiefs are going to win more than 10 and a half games. Unless the only thing that could happen is like a Mahomes injury and they just pack up shop or whatever. Um, but they're almost borderline good enough with Chad Haney to, to win like nine or ten. So depending on when that happens, that would even be too late. The, the Chiefs over is so easy, but everyone's looking at the Chiefs. A lot of people, the public wants to fade the Chiefs because they're over the Chiefs. They're tired of the Chiefs. Now they lost Tyree Kill. They're like, oh, here's a perfect reason to be like, this team won't be as good. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. And they're with an impossibly hard schedule. It's definitely the hardest schedule they've ever played. For sure. But thank goodness they get to play the AFC West six games. I mean, you got two two wins against the, the Broncos because the Broncos haven't beat them in like a century. If I had to check, I think it's 13 straight now, Chris. I 13 mean, straight keep, against the Broncos. Keep holding Third, on to that. Just to be clear. Just to be clear, a professional football team has lost to another professional football team 13 straight times. 13, Chris. I'll say it again. 13 straight times. And it's not over yet. I mean, it could be over, but it's it's an active streak, Chris. It could be more than that. Are you done? Are you done? Sure, sure, sure. I just wanted people to understand. Don't worry. We'll just pull us off those oh, three Super Bowl trophies oh, of our success. Oh my and, god! Uh, we'll, we'll make it's sure it's like those. you would have assumed you've won like thirty-seven to our two. It's three to two, Chris. <laughs> it's three to two. I mean, if you're looking at, I mean, it's pretty even across the overall win totals. It's not like you. No, been... no, it's not. What did we say what? last time when we we were like, oh, it's pretty dead even in the AFC West. There's only a couple teams that are like, you know, it, it's pretty close o long term overall in the history of all of the franchises in the AFC West. They're pretty dead even at this point. No, cr literally the Chiefs have a winning record against all of them. Okay. Every single one of them. Let uh, Well, let's just say this. 
All right, so yeah, you, all right, so you got the Chiefs. You got the Chiefs plus. What are we at? Ten and a half right here, right? Ten and a half. You think they're going to win eleven games? You know, right? There's no, no de de there's no denying more, more than eleven. There's no denying the Chiefs' offense is good, right? They're good. Uh, yeah. So let me know when I should go live. Action lab. Uh, whenever you want, man. You can go. I mean, <laughs> go live. I don't want to tell you when to go live. Are you going live tonight? <laughs> uh, There's a guy named Russell Wilson better than any QB since Manning for Broncos says money magic. All right. There you go. Yeah, that's a super low bar. But okay. Uh, Reed has a one fewer I than 12. I, I, you could argue I might have been the best quarterback for the Broncos since Manning. Uh, Reed has a one fewer than 12 since Mahomes showed up. Uh, says DZ. So, yeah. I mean, and that's a lot of 16 game seasons. And look at the Alex Smith seasons, by the way. I don't think they ever won less than 11 with Alex. Alex Smith, Chris. It's just, it's, it's, a, this is the most crazy number I've ever seen. The 10 and a half is wild to me. Wild. Uh, yeah, no. And I, do I think that the Chiefs can easy, get it? nine and seven to 2014? There's 0% chance that Andy Reid was the coach in 2014. No chance. Go ahead, Chris. No, no, no. That's fine. Um, no. And, uh, realistically, um, with this, I think that the Chiefs can get the 11 wins. I think that that's doable for the Chiefs. I think it's doable. Uh, I think they get there. I think that with this division, it's going to be tough. I think their schedule is going to be tough. I think there's going to be a lot to battle through when it comes to this one. Um, I just... Patrick Mahomes can make everyone around him better. Andrew Reid is one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the NFL. They still have Travis Kelsey. They still have a lot of pieces there. I worry a little bit on defense, but at the same time, you, you worry on defense, but at the same time, they've done well with a bad defense like last year. So Every you, year. Yeah, so they do well and win games. They have the right game plans. They, they're a smart team. They're well coached. I think that, and they have one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So Honestly, I think that they have enough to win at least at least 11 games. So I'll take the over on the Kansas City Chiefs here. This is going to be a tough division, but um, I'll, I'll take the over on the Chiefs. All right. Reed, Reed is right, by the way. Um, they went 9-7 and seven in 2014 with Smith. Uh, Andy Reed took over in 2013. They traded in that offseason for Alex Smith, who no one would assume is like a big, you know, mover of the needle, right? Like Alex Smith was the number one overall pick, but never lived up to those expectations by any means. You could argue he was like a run of the mill average quarterback. Um, Andy Reed took over a team that had the number one overall pick in the draft in 2013. Number one overall pick in the draft. They went two and fourteen. Then he went. He literally the next year went eleven and five. And then yeah, they went nine and seven. I'd have to remember that season why they dropped off. And then since then, eleven and five, twelve and four, ten and six, and the last four years with Mahomes, twelve and four, twelve and four, fourteen and two, and twelve and five. So you have a ten and a half number here. And Mahomes has never, never not won 12 games. Yeah, no, regular season, and, I think they'll be three fine. Of those four, three of those four seasons were a game less. You can, all right, fine. I was wrong on Andy with that one year, but Mahomes has the highest winning percentage in the history of football among quarterbacks that have played as many games as him. It's just a fact. And we're going to... We're gonna say because he lost Tyree Kill, and you worry about the defense, Chris. It's not. It's not a concern for me. The defense will be better this year than it was last year. I mean, I. I mean, anyway, I, I said they anyway, were fine with that. I, I said they were fine with the bad defense anyway. So, yeah. uh, I mean, keep in mind, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, it, it, they'll, they'll win some regular season games. It's the playoff record, and I think that 
you know, and since 2000, the Chiefs are 9 and 10 in playoffs. Broncos are 7 and 8. I mean, still one game below 500 for each franchise. Not not super far off, right? So, I'll take it. I mean, I uh, it, it's it's I mean, it, when we're talking about all of the craziness that you're saying with uh your Chiefs all of a sudden, you know. I mean, in the since 2000, it's not they're not they're not far off from each other, Scotty. Since the last twenty two years, twenty two years. So you're gonna just you're just gonna ignore ignore the last like six. <laughs> no, no, in I'm order not to ignore. go back to the last. It's all averaging wow. out. It's all average. You know, we're all averaging out eventually. Can and we just average out the last six years? That seems like a long enough stretch. We don't need to go back twenty two years, which is incredibly <laughs> irrelevant, Chris. Same. Um. Anyway, but I would also argue, and I don't want to talk about the Chiefs anymore. I really don't. But DZ. To be fair, John Dorsey also showed up in 2013 with Reed, so it wasn't all Andy Reed. Um, okay, okay. And where is John? Dor- what is John Dorsey doing right now? Where does he work? He must be really good. He must be like the top top GM in the league. Where is he working? Just saying. All right, let's move to my Denver Broncos. He also turned around the Browns. No, having high draft picks eventually turns around any team but if he turned around the browns dz why is he out of a job why is he out of a job if he's so good at it um chiefs at 10 and a half this g girl um uh, yeah i think that's i think that's fair i think that's safe uh safe to say i'm not placing any bets on that that involved the afc west as broncos uh to be fair yeah yeah john dorsey okay let's go to the broncos 10 now 10, I think, is right around if if there's a team that I like to push here. <laughs> can I pick a push here? Um, Broncos, for me, I'm getting a little bit worried about how much they've figured out with the new offense. And that's, I think... They, so, here's my concern with the Broncos. And here's why I feel like I'm leaning under for the Broncos at 10. Only because one... We have a, we've talked a lot about it on the show. New offense. We're trying to get through the preseason. We're not playing any starters. We're not getting anything rolling here. When it comes to getting that experience against teams, when you need to get experience and the timing and everything else, you can only do so much in practice against a full team is a different story. Now, also, I think that the Broncos will have some growing pains. They have an early start to the season that's pretty easy. We've seen this before, right? Remember when we started like 4-0? and And I was like, it doesn't matter. The season starts in week five when we actually play someone strong. And then all of a sudden, look how the wheels fell off that season. We have a similar early schedule that's very easy that could really... Take it as you will. You could treat it as like, you know, kind of a preseason style. And you could try to take those te- advantage of those teams. But... I think that it's going to be kind of like that week four, week five, week six, where you're starting to see some stronger teams that might derail the Broncos a little bit and kind of question kind of all the things we put in place early on up until this point. That being said, I love the push at 10 more so than I love anything else. If I, I have to go, yeah. I, I'm going to lean under. You're going to go under. I'm going to lean under. Uh, I mean, of course it's under. The under is the clear, obvious choice here. There's no way they're winning 11 games. They might win 10, but that's their peak. I Like, like I said, that's 10, that, that's... 10 and 7 is literally their peak. But Chris, I, I hate the Broncos more than anything. And as you were talking... I couldn't even focus on it because of the garbage in the chat. And not <laughs> oh, garbage. No. Not garbage. Just what I would disagree with. Um, going back again to John Dorsey, which why do we have to talk about John Dorsey? Um, but here we are. So I said, I don't know if it's Dorsey, any of this. Reckoning he's out of a job because Jimmy Haslam has a very quick trigger finger. Okay. So he's out of a job because his the owner, you know, the guy above him doesn't like him. Cool. So he must be the GM 
of another team. But no, it turns out he's just a senior high-ranking official in Detroit, which, by the way, is like a fake position. That's basically saying we don't want you to pick our players, but you have experience, so let's make sure you're involved. Because if they really liked him, he would be a GM. If this guy was so good at being a general manager, why isn't he a general manager? Think about that. Just think about that while you try and convince yourself that John Dorsey is some sort of genius. He's been countless places. They moved on from him. And now he's no longer a GM. He's in a fake position. It's a fake title to be a senior representative in, in with the Lions organization. Fine. What does that mean? Nothing. Does he have any say in who they draft? Not really. He's in the room. But he's he's got about as much say as if I was in the room, Chris. Not a lot. And he doesn't deserve a lot because he's not that good. I don't think Dorsey was awful as a, as a GM at all. But to say he's great or like, oh, you don't understand and he's he's now this new position, this made up position. It's a it's literally a demotion, Chris. It's a demotion to this fake position they created in Detroit just to bring on a guy that per- is perceptively someone who wins. Uh, let's see. Samuel the Sniper. By the way, Samuel the Sniper, are you new? I, I feel like it doesn't have a new distinction under you, but I feel like you haven't been around a while. So remind me of your team and remind me of where you're from. I'd like to get to know you uh, if if we have not already. We probably did, but I'm. it's been a while. So, if, if so, welcome back. That young defense the Chiefs have might surprise some people. They have high-energy guys that like to run around the field and smack people around. Yeah. Um, real quick, Rex. Rex says, Dorsey is a big reason the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. He traded up and drafted Patrick Mahomes. To be clear, 100% he was the GM at that time. But I promise you, the reason the Chiefs traded Traded up, and who was in whose ear was Brett Veach, the GM of the Chiefs right now. Uh, Brett Veach was the reason the Chiefs moved up, not John Dorsey. Not John Dorsey for Pat Mahomes. Don't get it twisted. Don't ever once think John Dorsey had any role in the Chiefs drafting Patrick Mahomes because it was all Brett Veach, even when he wasn't the GM. I promise you that. I uh, promise you. Scotty, let's dive into the chi- uh, the Chargers here. We got to, I mean... We got to get through some of these. So yeah, 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 we got a long way to go. We we're, long- we're not even <laughs> we're not even in the NFC. Let's speed it up. You're right. Um, Chargers. Go. Yeah, Chargers next. Chargers are weird for me, Chris. I like the Chargers as a team a lot. You know, and I know they're hyped up every year, and they classically underachieve. Yep. Um, ten ten feels like a. A really, really good number under for uh, Scott, uh, under for Denver, Rick. Oh yeah, one hundred percent under on Denver. Um, sorry, Chargers. Mm. I lean, I lean under on Chargers as well. I think ten is a really, really good number. I don't see them winning more than 11 games, though. They're not getting to 12. So so to win this bet, you're literally betting on them having their highest upside of the season. Um, This is a team that, again, everyone loved last year, and they missed the playoffs. They had a win-or-go-home game against the Raiders, who everyone thought the Chargers were a better team then, and so does Vegas by these numbers. And Vegas won that game. They won that game. They're the better team. I don't... Everyone's hyping the Chargers defense. I'll see it. Like, I'll believe it when I see it. Like, I know you added Mac. I know you added JC Jackson to go along with Derwin James and to go along with Joey Bosa. That's four really nice pieces, but there's 11 guys on defense. And the other seven are garbage. Well, not garbage. Not all seven. But their front seven outside of... Outside of Bosa and Mac, and I know those are two really good players. Outside of that, you know, they drafted, uh, what's his name, a linebacker out of Oklahoma a couple years ago. He's been fine, but not elite. This is why you never drafted, by the way, a linebacker 
in the first round of a draft ever. I don't care how good he is. It doesn't fit with today's game. Now I'm just spouting, Chris. I'm going to take... I'm going to take under. I don't even like that bet, but I'm going to take under. I think similar to the Broncos, I think push is kind of like the bet here. I I honestly, before, you know, obviously we don't talk about these things before we go on. I like the under for the Chargers. Hold on, I, hold, on hold on to your butts. I like the under for the Chargers just for the simple fact that I think like, I don't like the depth of wide receiver. You, if one guy goes down, then, like, what options do you have? You have young guys kind of filling in. I don't... I mean, Eckler's kind of been in and out of injuries all the time. You have a decent defense, but, I mean, it was still giving up run after run after run. And, like, they, they can't stop the run. They can't do it. So, they haven't gotten better in that department. There's just so much here that I'm like, they are overhyped every year. I've seen them ranked number two. In rankings, I've seen them uh, in power rankings. I've seen them rank number two overall in various departments. I'm like, what? Like in the league, not just two in the AFC, not just two in the AFC West, two in the league. I just, there's too much hype around it. Uh, and I, I'll believe it when I see it for the Chargers. Yeah. A lot of people are saying 10 is the right number and 10 is the right number. I, I feel like they'll, they'll probably go 10 and 7. Uh, last in this division is the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are an interesting one. They've made a lot of additions. Uh, and they've, I mean, from the wide receiver standpoint, is kind of the big one, right? So Las Vegas Raiders added all pro Deve- uh, Packer, Deve- Devontae Adams, to their team. Um, you, we already have Chairman over. Under for Vegas is the reckoning. It's all over the place. Um, I think the Raiders... For me, uh, what are we at here? So we are at eight and a half for the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This one's a tough one for me because Josh McDaniels is coming in as a new head coach, right? We have yeah. a running game that I think, you know, they're tr- they're going to try to figure out throughout the course of the season. I don't think they're going to figure that out right off the bat. They have Darren Waller, tight end. They have some receiving pieces, Renfro. You have Devontae Adams, right? So I like I like what Carr has from a throwing standpoint. Um, Derek Carr with the, the eyeshadow could be tough to root for at some points, right? Like he's Mr. Raider. Mr. Mr. I want to be a Raider for life. Um, eight and a half. This is the most competitive division. And I think... Man, this is this is a tough one for me. Um, I think for the Los Angeles Raiders, I lean. I lean under. I lean yeah. under. Um, I know you like the Raiders a lot this year. I think you think they're going to finish not last in this division. I think you said. I- I, I think eight and a half is a weird number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they finish around eight. And I think they are on the outside looking in when it comes to playoffs. They're, it's just a weird team because they have some deficiencies on the defensive back, uh, defensive, you know, secondary positions that I'm like not excited about. They're not, they're not super exciting there. I think there's a lot of weapons that can burn them on the back end and I think they could get outscored in a lot of games. I lean under. Uh I'll go quick. Uh easy over. Um I think the Raiders definitely finished on the over here. I mean this is a team that finished over last year and they trade for Devontae Adams at wide receiver, arguably the number one wide receiver in the league. Oh, and they add Chan- Chandler Jones on the defensive line to combine with Max Crosby, who was elite as yeah. a pass rusher. I think they have problems on defense other elsewhere, but like you have a team that finished over this and you had Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones. And by the way, finished second in this division, despite a prediction of fourth last year. Tell me why the Denver deserves a game and a half like cushion here on the over win totals. Cause we I don't think- have McDaniels. Yeah, I think the Broncos 
are going to be clearly the worst offensive team in this division. Now, you could argue maybe Denver has the... uh, We'll see whether they have a, a defense good enough to just be above and beyond these other defenses. They could, but the offense for Denver is going to be the worst. So for the Raiders to be a game and a half, a game and a half behind the Broncos to me is wild. I will take the over on eight and a half. I think when you combine Carr with an offensive line that's figured things out, Devontae Adams, who's maybe the best wide receiver in the league to go with Hunter Renfro and uh, Waller. Like there's a lot of weapons there. Um, nah, give me over eight and a half. Uh, Raiders have the 30th ranked schedule. They have to be the over. Uh, who's the number one on the Chiefs? Juju says. Juju. says I Juju. mean, if he's if he's healthy, Juju at wide receiver. I mean, the number one is obviously Kelsey, but at wideout, the number one will be Juju. Uh, Diacola disagreeing with me says uh, over on the Raiders. Uh, I have zero faith in a team that hired a head coach and GM from the Patriots. Is reckoning. Yeah, that's too simplistic for me. I'm not going to just ward off a team based off of where I I have the philosophy. And this happens a lot in the draft, Chris, where people are like, oh, I can't draft a quarterback from this team because other players that have come out of this school that have looked good haven't worked out. You draft the player, not the team he played for, just like you pick the coach, not the, where he came from. Does the 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 tree from Belichick suck overall? Yes. Is McDaniels going to be great? I don't know. But he doesn't have to be great for this team to win more than eight and a half games. 